Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As they say in Taiwan, they say, on a rainy day, if you can really visit, it's the day for the best friend. We are so proud of that. We have so many friends here tonight. I think we should give Peter Ye, the president of this chamber, a big applause. I think Peter and his team make this uh, event very successful. And tonight I get the honor to introduce our keynote speaker. And I will take this moment to report anyone in this room was born in 1964. If you do, please raise your hand. 1964. I mean, oh, okay, we have one, okay? You remember 1964 to now is 50 years old, okay? Just remember, okay? That's very significant year that you have to remember for tonight's speech. The second one I will do is survey. Anyone born in 1979? Anyone born in 1979? Well, okay. 35 years ago, that our keynote speaker do a lot of effort for Taiwan. And about this time, he was testified in the Congress for Taiwan. Because at the time, it's in the process to sign the uh, Taiwan Relations Act. His testimony in the Congress leading the Taiwan Relations Act become effective. And that's due inferential to Taiwan's relation with the United States today. And what he's special is because he received, he's the only American received the uh, brilliant stars uh, with their great honor. It's a great honor uh, in the private sector for the uh, uh, American. He's the only one. And that was back in two, year 2000. Uh, President Dean Wei awarded him, and so he's so on. And, you know, during the past so many years, he had done so much for Taiwan. In 1963, he graduated from the uh, Tex University of Texas, and then in 1964, he first time to visit Taiwan. And then in 1967, he actually uh, graduated from the uh, University of Sydney, State University. In 1968, he actually had a chance, you know, maybe some of our guests, our guests you know, you're running for the uh, campaign for this year, right? He is the one helping Johnson, President Johnson, in the, as a campaign staff. So if whoever wants to learn how to run a campaign, ask him. Okay, he's, uh, he has experience. Okay. That's in, back in 1968. And then in the uh, first, uh, 1976, in the first year, he had his uh, first law school in, uh, in Taipei to serve in, uh, that's the first one, that's the first one of the uh, uh, international uh, kind of law firm in, in Taipei. And in uh, 1988, actually in 1988, you opened your second law office in Taipei. Okay, that's the 1988. And I jump into France because 1979, he not only helped Taiwan uh, to promote the Taiwan Nation Act, he also, the most important, he used the one U.S. dollar. Maybe a lot of people don't know how much back for one U.S. dollar. He used one U.S. dollar to buy the uh, equipment from the American Force Network, which is a radio station. Well, America did go out, and he helped the community to create, to establish a international community radio Taipei, uh, the first one in Taiwan. So we're really proud of him, 
And then 1989, very early year, he married with a beautiful wife, Fu uh, Yachin, she's right here. Okay. And then he, uh, we cut it short, and then he, uh, uh, 1989, he married, and then the, uh, 1995, he moved back to San Francisco Bay Area, and then he joined into the uh, white case uh, law firm 2012. And now he served as the uh, senior uh, counsel for that law firm. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please help me to welcome our uh, keynote speaker tonight. He was the uh, president of the uh, Taipei American Chamber of Commerce before. Let's welcome Mr. Parker. begins as a story of friendship at the personal level and at the national level. And it certainly has all of the qualities of a great friendship. Mutual affection and respect, shared values, experience, and memories. But it's also much more than that. As individuals, Many Taiwanese have attended American universities, raised families here, contributed their talents to American companies, or started businesses of their own. And many, certainly many of you in this room, have become Americans and are both Taiwanese and Americans. In my heart, I am too. American companies such as RCA, Fairchild Semiconductor, General Instrument, were early investors in Taiwan and contributed to the beginnings of the industrialization of Taiwan and the transfer of technology and the training of young engineers who went on to found great Taiwan companies. As a young American lawyer, I had the opportunity to create an international law office in Taipei and to serve as chairman of a counterpart to this organization, the American Chamber of Commerce in Taipei. Later on, I was also able to serve on the board of Taiwan's uh, largest university, private university, and the U.S. Taiwan Fulbright Commission. As individuals, we have in many ways joined one another's families, sometimes literally as in my own case. And I was very honored a few months ago when the World Journal published an article on me and referred to me as Taiwan's son-in-law. At the national level, the U.S. and Taiwan have helped one another as friends too. 
dating back to the earliest days in the 1950s, the U.S. Foreign Aid Program, JCRR, and the land reform. And in, in good times and in bad, we've stood together. Think of Taiwan's support for the U.S. during our involvement in the Vietnam War. And even when disagreements or differences on issues have arisen, as they do from time to time, between even the best of friends, we've resolved those in friendship. To give just two examples, in 1964, the PRC exploded a nuclear weapon. And in a natural response, Taiwan began a nuclear weapons program of its own. But then, as a result of very cordial discussions between the U.S. and Taiwan, it was mutually agreed that a nuclear weapons program was not in Taiwan's long-term best interest, and the program was terminated. In the 1980s and 90s, concern arose with the uh, infringement of intellectual property rights in Taiwan. And again, through cordial discussions and, and progress in the enactment of new laws, the strengthening of enforcement, Taiwan gradually came to grips with the commercial counterfeiting issue, the infringement issue. And I think as much as anything, the, the key to that was not only friendship with the United States, but the realization that the protection of intellectual property rights in Taiwan was not only in the interest of foreigners, but it also provided the protection and the incentive for creative minds in Taiwan to develop new technologies and products. Trade and investment between the United States and Taiwan, of course, is remarkable. And both countries have participated in the economic miracle, the export-led economic miracle of Taiwan, which the U.S. opening of its market to Taiwan products did much to, to contribute. And we've seen Taiwan develop from poverty to wealth in the span of one lifetime. It's fascinating to look back in history and see how trade began in both countries, even before they traded with one another. Taiwan's earliest export products back in the 1600s were antlers. And on the American side, when you look at the early 19th century and Thomas Jefferson's purchase of the Louisiana Territory, which really doubled the size of the United States and added the whole western half of this country. Jefferson was a visionary and he foresaw great economic potential in the western part of the United States, which today is obvious to us. But even in Jefferson's brilliant mind, in those days, the product that excited his imagination the most, the greatest potential that he saw in the western United States, was beavers. Beavers. Beaver pelts. So, imagine how far we've come.